Okay, welcome back to the channel everybody. Um, on this one, well this is going to be the first of probably two parts, um, I'm going to fit the new Brox CT full titanium system. Now, according to Brox you don't need to take the radiator off, um, but I'm going to do that, A because it's very fiddly in there, but more than that I want to get in there, up here, and give it a clean up and also want to clean the radiator so I thought I might as well just take the whole thing out um, so I'm going to start by draining it down now for those of you who watched the other videos that I've done um, I've only just changed the coolant in this literally weeks ago and um, so I've got a nice clean container and I'm going to reuse the coolant because a 40 odd pound to go um, it doesn't need changing I don't think so I'm going to start by draining it down from here and after last time which was the actually the first time I changed it myself it surprised me how much of a jet comes out of here so this time I'm ready for it hopefully he says Oh, and I remembered to take the radiator cap off because last time I didn't and I just sat here looking at it thinking why is nothing coming out but anyway that's a different story so I'll just let that sit and drain for a minute <clears throat> okay now I'm going to take this radiator hose off um, now I'm not going to save whatever comes out of here because all this is a dirty area um, you wouldn't believe I cleaned that up from the last time I did this but I have been to Switzerland and back on it in the last week um, <clears throat> but there's lots of dirt here and I don't want any of that going into the clean coolant so whatever comes out of here now is going to get thrown away, thrown away. <coughs> First time this hose has been off this end that I know about. Oop. Little bit in there as expected. But basically, hardly anything. <clears throat> That's not too bad. Now I'm going to go round the other side. Okay, now we're around the other side. Um, I'm going to take this hose off now. Now, first of all, before I forget, there's just here. I'm, I won't move the camera around, but just right there is one of those little black plastic rivets with the centre that you have to push in. So I've got a little thing for poking the middle of it in and push that in there and pull it out, there it is. Now I think what that does is <coughs> you see this wire here and this rubber, it's like a dirt shield I assume, <coughs> there's a split in it here. And this wire goes down to the O2 sensor um, which we'll be having to get out at a later point so I want to take that out but it also enables me to split I think this rubber seal around the hose because there's a join in it there you can see where the wire goes through that hole there so I think that's how we take that apart but anyway We'll come back to that in a minute. <coughs> now I'm going to take this top clip off and 
what is quite surprising is some of these clips are extremely loose. Um, that one there was barely much more than finger tight, I would have said. So it might be worth putting that in a maintenance every time you take this apart is to go round and just nip up these Jubilee clips because um, that one was really loose and I doubt it's ever been taken off in the life of the bike <clears throat> anyway let's carry on take this little hose off here as well <clears throat> There's one up here which goes into what I think is um, the thermostat housing, but I'm not 100% sure. Excuse my arm getting in the way, this is not easy to do without me blocking the whole picture okay that's coming away right let's give it a bit of a twist there it goes little bit oh blimey okay that's interesting I wasn't expecting all that to still be in there but I suppose looking at it it's um, it would be but the book doesn't say anything about that I'll take this down there's um, still some water in it this is quite interesting because the book doesn't tell you about any of this that I could find when it comes to doing a coolant change. Um, now, if, as I sit here and look at this more, this hose, even if you take the hose and the drain plug out from the left hand side of the bike, um, this hose is always going to have water in it. Obviously the engine will drain down up to what I guess is the thermostat housing, as I said earlier. But this entire hose here will still be full of water, or coolant I should say. Um, which means when you drain it down you don't get all of it. Now, I sort of realise when you do the oil it doesn't all come out because there must be parts of the engine where the oil sits and it just won't drain out, but you get the vast majority of it. Um, this is worth remembering for the future actually. Um, and also, as I'm looking at it, the, the radiator wouldn't drain down any further than about here, where, where the hose is on this side and the, the left hand side. So I'm guessing that there must be about that much of the original coolant left in when you drop drop it out to renew it anyway we'll cross that bridge later on because I'm going to pull it all apart so let's get this hose out of here or we'll loosen it up anyway pull this one off hopefully that should be empty yeah so yeah, I hope you can see that although it's there won't be a huge amount of cooling in there it's still a reasonable amount you know that hose is what the best part of an inch wide I guess um, yeah that's a bit strange anyway I'll have to double check the book but bear that in mind because it caught me out okay now you can see in there um, that does indeed look like a thermostat in there, but it's a bit 
bit hard to tell. Anyway, onwards and upwards. Yeah, I would just pull this little pipe off here as well. Hopefully. Okay, so this side's slightly lower than the other side, and that's what I meant um, when I was talking about the bit that's stuck in the bottom. I can't quite see the other side from here, so I'm assuming it's actually lower. I just need to get a um, the, the catch tank from around the other side. Okay, now what I'm going to do is take these two little ones off that are up top here. Now, I think these just need a little spring clips. A pair of pliers. Just slide them along a bit. Okay. Get a little flat blade screwdriver just to you want to help it off. Yeah, it's quite tight. That's that one. Yeah. I've got I assume one of these is um an expansion sort of overflow thing and it goes back into the um, into the reservoir around the other side the, the plastic bottle but I assume we also don't want to be getting these mixed up so remember which one goes on the top and which one goes on the bottom <coughs> Right, now we've got to disconnect the electrical for the fans. Um, I think this is it here, or the socket anyway, plug and socket. Um, just one of these pop apart ones, which I say just, of course they never want to come out, do they? There we go. And it disappears off down here um, through the rubber dirt shield and what there is in there which I've just taken out is another one of these little clips with the middle you have to push in and it goes through from underneath here um, and it enables you to get that away so you can get the cable through now you just have to fold all this down out of the way but it's on oh, there's a little clip here as well which you can see quite easily it's just a plastic and it pops through a hole and holds itself in it's just to hold the cable so don't forget that and then you poke the cable back down here and it should I can't really put the camera down here to show this but as you take it apart you'll understand what it does and you can see how it goes and there it comes out and there's another one of these at the other side I won't show you that but it's um, the same sort of thing only it's easier to get out so remember there's two fans I was only expecting one um, but I guess the fans might come on at different times I suppose so there we go that's that bit okay now we're round on the left hand side of the bike <coughs> and I'm going to remove this little fixing here, which is bracket to the bottom of the radiator. And let's get in there and take this out. Can't quite see, but it looks like the bracket that it's that's there is has a captive nut on the back, um, and it's also by the looks of it holding on my. Um, RNG radiator guard so B 
bear that in mind if your bike's got a radiator guard on it. And something I've just noticed up here as well, that radiator guard is unbelievably close. You probably can't see that actually. Just up the top there, up there, it's unbelievably close to um, where the horn is. So I'll need to be a bit careful with that, but hopefully the guard will protect the radiator as I drop it down. Right now, I'm at the, I hope you can see this, it's quite difficult, I'm at the top of the radiator you can see where the socket disappears to in there um, there's a fixing there and there's one the other side as well which is a little bit more enclosed than this one <coughs> so I'll sh as long as you can see me getting this one out <sighs> there it comes I shall take this all the way out now I'm having to hold a light and do this at the same time, but I'm going to go round and take the other one out. Um, and I think that that's all that's left holding the radiator in. But I'll come back in a minute. Hopefully we can uh, see the last bit come down, or the radiator come down. Right, now I'm round at the right hand side of the bike. Um, Hopefully you can see that bolt head there, which is the right hand side top radiator fixing I believe. So I'm carefully going to undo that. Oh, let me take you out a little bit. Because when this comes out the radiator comes down. So I need to be a bit, a bit careful how I do this. Obviously I really don't want to drop the radiator. In fact I'm going to move you over here. And hopefully we get a bit of a better angle on it as well as enable me to have a bit of space. Sorry it's a bit dark. Hopefully that's a little better. But anyway, now let's try and support the weight of the radiator and try and get in here. probably a technique to this and if there is I don't know what it is yet this could all go horribly wrong okay that's the bolt hope you can see that Okay, this is interesting. Not entirely certain why it isn't just dropping down. That didn't sound very nice, did it? There's got to be something in here I've missed, but I can't see what it is. I'm just going to have to change position I think. I don't want to drop this radiator for obvious reasons. Okay sorry about that. Um, you can guess what happened as soon as I switched the camera on the radiator came down, came away. <coughs> it was getting hooked up on the top there on a, there's a couple of cable ties that hold the RNG guard on and it was hooked on one of those somehow up there. But after I took that second bolt out that aside it came away quite easily. Plenty of space to to deal with it. Um, here it is. Now, as you can probably see there is a hell of a lot of muck on the back of that so I think a um, front mudguard extender, fender extender is 
on the cards at some point because I mean that is completely gunk solid but that is 25,000 miles worth of dirt there I'll give it a good soak in and hopefully all that will come out um, on the front of it let me say there's the RNG which is looking a bit worse for wear but it's doing its job with regarding stones apart from the dirt that's actually it looks in nice condition apart from the dirt so hopefully it'll clean up um, <clears throat> so yeah the RNG has done its job in terms of stopping stones and various things hitting it so that's good uh, anyway right uh, not a lot else I can say about this one and um, nobody wants to sit and watch me clean this thing for hours on end which will probably be the next job but uh, that's it for this one um, hopefully I'll do part two soon I'm waiting for a few parts to arrive um, the exhaust header gaskets and I'm going to treat it to some stainless steel um, flange nuts up there um, so as soon as they come um, part two so see you then thanks for watching <laughs>